Jason Collat, he is our untapped artist. Say hi. Hello, everybody. Untapped artists who aren't signed to major labels, who are doing huge things in Canada. And I want to thank you, Jason. This is what you get when you get the album. It's a Christmas time. <laughs> not only do you give us oh, I know what's gonna the lyrics, he gives you the MP3 download. It's the hot pink. Is that your phone? All about the, oh, absolutely. No, this is like, this is, uh, you know, there's various plateaus in anybody's career. And that's kind of the pinnacle for me, getting to do some hot pink vinyl. And where are the lyrics, including the lyrics, also your decision? Yeah, I, I t I've always liked records with lyrics, you know. And reading your, your songs, what's so great about his songs is anybody, I think anybody can write a love song. If your heart's been broken or if you're breaking other people's hearts, you can write love songs. His love songs are, you make, you make people feel good for being in relationships and going oh, through yeah. shit. Oh, right. For, I make people feel good for going through shit. <laughs> it's good. I like that. Oh, well, thanks. I Actually, no, I, I do like, I like that you say that. Um, I, although I, I don't think anybody can write a love song. I think they're really hard to write, you know, Th to write one that's just not a cliche, but that you, you know, I, uh, that people can relate to. Okay, a good know? love song. Writing a good love, love song is tough. Yeah, well, writing a good love song is, I think, uh, being honest about how often it goes bad, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in, uh, I'm interested in the challenge of trying, of trying to, uh, to uh, write, write songs like that. But, but also I like find the humor in it too. You're Do you feel better when you write? Oh, for sure. Writing, writing, to me, is the most important part of doing what I do. Uh, it, it, it's, it's where I, I get the, the most satisfaction. And it's cathartic. Writing itself is really just cathartic. Uh, you, um, you, you get a lot off your chest, I find. And, um, and, and it's, a, it's a mysterious thing. Too, you know, because I don't think about the songs too much. They just kind of come, you know, and and uh, and the best songs come when you're not really paying attention, you know. So it it is something that comes kind of through you from some place else. And the less you're thinking about it, the more open you happen to be f for them to arrive. So sometimes I don't really feel like I even own them, you know. I like nothing better than to wake up and, and not have anybody in my house and, uh, or get everybody out of my house and then have the house. Uh, and you know, after breakfast and some coffee, uh, I, I can sit down and write songs all day. I really. I have a lot of fun doing it. You know. I just finished making it, uh, a new record now. It'll come out in March. But I didn't play it for my manager or the label till it was done. You know, I, like I didn't want anybody hearing it uh, because I didn't. I. Uh, I didn't want their opinions about it, you know, uh, until, because because that tends to happen even on a small level. Like everybody has two two cents worth to uh, chip in, and, and uh, it can get kind of confusing. On the banks of Pentangle Sheen, I can see a lot of poking through skin tight jeans, thin hair low between her teeth. Oh man. Blessed to be surrounded by both. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a really great community of friends, and you know, and for years we've worked together, even when we're doing various solo projects. Um, we're sliding each other's our songs before they're finished, and getting comments from friends. You know, like we're working in a collective or a community of, of friends whose opinions you really trust. It makes you so much better. 
And having those friends put out really great quality work makes you really uh, stretch more yourself. If you work in a void where you no longer trust people's opinions or you're surrounded by people that fawn over you and, and, and say yes to any of your ideas and that are stupid, you know, you, your work suffers <laughs> for it, you know. So I really like the fact that we can keep each other level-headed. No, 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 none of my friends are afraid to tell me when I'm full of shit and when a song is going off the rails. So it's, it's, it's a great thing to have that. Here's to being here is, um, uh, in terms of the, the album title, a bit of a change from your last item title, but just a, a positive kind of borrowing a quote from someone that is, you know, in your music community, her father, certainly in your music community mm -hmm. in terms of being a poet. It's a funny little story. Uh, like, you know, so Emily, Emily Haynes from Metric, she's an old friend, um, uh, she gave, gave me a... Uh, <coughs> She gave me a book of her po father's poetry um, for my birthday, and, and uh, it was right when I was finishing making Here's to Being Here, and I didn't have a title for it yet. And uh, for some reason, I thought, you know, this uh, I might actually find a title in this book of poetry. So I, I did one of those silly things, you know, where you spin a globe and you just put your finger down and say, "I'm going here." Well, I did that with the book. I just flipped it, uh, the pages, and and just stopped. And the first poem I read. Uh, it had that line in it, yeah. and I closed the book. I thought, that's, that's awesome. That's kind of what I was looking for. And then I, then I second-guessed myself and thought, no, that was just too easy. So I flipped the book again, and that line was the title of a whole other poem. What? So Yeah, yeah. It, so I, you know, I got goosebumps in the back of my neck, and that sealed the deal. I knew that was the name for the record.